Hello everyone, uh, this is Tachi. I'm here again. I know I've been missing from, you know, the whole blog action, but I am back. And I am here to do a small webinar-like series on how to start a home business and possibly market it online. So here we go. I posted this question on Facebook, a question to the effect of, if you had to start a business tomorrow, what would be one of the biggest questions that you had that you would want somebody who was savvy in business to answer for you? And one of the top questions was, I want to start a business, I just don't know what to sell. Many people think that it is the product that determines the success. Um, in some cases, you're right. No one really wants to buy a product that they don't think they need and they don't want. Uh, but chances are you can sell anything. It's basically how you market. Again, most of the time it's not the product, it's the marketing. Uh, marketing is key and I'll be emphasizing it, highlighting it, and bolding it throughout this entire presentation. So remember, marketing is key. Marketing. Ever watch late night infomercials? Uh, I know your parents do, older people do, but even if you don't watch infomercials, maybe you glimpse at some commercials during the day. They are generally filled with junk that people don't need. Everybody's familiar with Snuggie. Now, there's no shade on Snuggie, no diss. It's a profitable business. Everybody, including Little Wayne, is walking around with one of these. But personally, I'm old-fashioned, and I like to wrap myself all the way in my blanket. But some people thought that blankets needed sleeves, and they are selling these like hotcakes. Snuggie is still on the tip of people's tongues. They're still making money. Again, it's the marketing. It's how they drew you in. It's how they made, they made it seem like your life would be so much easier if you bought a Snuggie. Another thing that I saw was a dicer that doubles as a blender, or maybe it's the other way around, a blender that doubled as a dicer. Another thing I saw was mittens that light up and sing. I don't know if I would personally purchase that, but again, they're selling like hotcakes and they're marketing to parents. They're marketing to kids. Why would people buy these dumb things? Uh, a lot of people are just like, I would never buy mittens that light up and sing. That's so not chic. Well, the reason is because of marketing. People are convinced that they need these items in order to make life easier. There's a thing that I learned, especially with being with Magnetic Sponsoring and having Mike Dillard basically hand his tools to me. And it's Marketing Psych 101. People are lazy. They are going to buy whatever, and they're going to do whatever to make life as painless as possible for them. Laziness is probably what drove you to this blog. You want to find a way to, you know, make it to the top quickly, which I'm going to talk about later. But uh, laziness drives people. People are lazy. Sell them a product that makes their life easier. Like I started to say, if you're insecure about your product, then make something that people need. And again, will make their lives so much easier. If you already have a product in mind to sell, then ask yourself who would benefit from it. If you have a particular perfect prospect group sort of person in mind, then it would be much easier for you to market to them. We'll talk about prospect, uh, perfect prospects in a minute. But Ray Higdon is one of the biggest network online marketers to ever do it and he did it through a blog he's a great great person and I was lucky enough to watch a webinar that he did talking about online marketing and how to do it effectively and one of the keys was to make sure you understand your target market get into their heads find out what really makes them tick uh, what makes them go out and buy the stuff that they do Questions to consider when you're choosing your perfect prospect. Again, I use perfect prospect. It's kind of like a magnetic marketing 
Ray Higdon type of term, but it could stand for your target audience, people who you're hoping would buy your product. And when you try to choose a specific target, here's some questions that uh, Ray Higdon mentioned that I um, personally used to find my target market. And they are, what is their occupation? What are their problems? What books do they read? What are their desires? Where do they hang out? And again, what books do they read? It's not a typo. I put it in twice for a reason. Books are a big deal. And I will be doing a webinar on books. Trust me, you're going to want to see this. But anyways, back to the topic at hand. So I'm going to give you some examples. My personal example about um, my blog, who I cater to, who I cater my business around uh, using these questions. My example. My perfect prospect would be a college student looking to break out into the entrepreneurial world. Their problem would be debt. Balancing their budget so they can live life how they've always dreamed. Pay for school and sometimes, you know, have a little money extra on the side in case of a rainy day or in case of a vacation. Books. They want to learn and they read a lot of college books, a lot of rudimentary courses for their major, but none of those books necessarily keep them from growing broke. In fact, some go broke being in an institution. Not saying you should drop out of college or drop out of trade school or whatever. I'm just saying, they don't necessarily teach you how to prevent yourself from going broke. The desires of these students would be um, to live life carefree. How they want. If they wanted to have a you only live once moment, let them do it. They would have the means to do it. That's basically one of their desires. Where do they hang out? I would like you to name one college student, especially a recent grad student, that hasn't been to one career fair ever. That's right, you can't even do it. You probably go to career fairs all the time. My target students will be going to career fairs, networking programs, and marketing events to find out how other entrepreneurs did it, how they started up, what their costs, basically all the questions that I'm going to be covering here today, they probably ask at one of these three events. And again, what books do they read? My target audience would probably read anything that had Robert Kiyosaki or Donald Trump attached to it. These are two big, big names that market, advertise, made it big in the corporate world and out of the corporate world. And they basically made books for us to know how they did it. Maintenance. Another popular question was, how would someone go about maintaining their business if they already have one? The answer is, again, marketing. If you don't get anything from this webinar, get marketing, please. Marketing is a huge factor. You can sell anything if you have the best marketing strategy in the world. People do it all the time. A lot of things that I tell people about maintenance is to get a page on Facebook and get all your friends to like it. I know I have a friend, she's a makeup artist, she created a page and she just posts all of her accomplishments, but she does her work and a lot of people liked her page. Um, a lot of people referred her to others and they went on their page and liked it. She personally did my makeup for my birthday. She's great, she's awesome. See, another referral. She has a page. I went in and I liked it. Uh, get all your friends to like it. If they're your friends on Facebook and you truly know them, they're going to like your page. Get PPC ads on Facebook. PPC basically stands for uh, pay-per-click. When people click on your ads, you pay like a nominal fee to have your ad broadcasted at the side of people's pages. And you get charged for who clicks on it and actually visits your sites and likes it. So it's a good thing to have. It gets a lot of traffic to your page. Uh, there's pay-per-click ads on Google as well. This is how they look. Everybody's seen one of these. Everybody's seen one of these. Have a Facebook page and you have a whole bunch of 
advertisements on the side. These are pay-per-click ads. Blogging is another surefire way to get traffic to your page and get sales and get, you know, people to just buy your product. Ray Higdon, as I mentioned, put up a blog, a Twitter, and a Facebook, and he is doing the thing, and people are actually paying him to blog. So blogging is a good one to get traffic to your page, to get leads, prospe prospects to look at your product, and also to make startup money. Attending events where your prospects are. Half of the battle is knowing how to market online. You should also appeal to people in person. Work on your people skills. Talking to people doesn't hurt. In fact, it helps. Networking also comes with talking to people. So the more people you talk to, the more you network, the more other people you know. And provide great customer service. I can't name how many times I stopped using products and brand names because of how sucky their customer service is. If I feel like I put my money into something and I call you or I email you to fix it and the response isn't timely and people are rude and it's a long outstanding wait, I'm not going to want to ever buy your product again because I'm trying to avoid that feat. So please have great customer service for any product. Another question is, what are effective ways of getting big fast? <laughs> it's my personal favorite. This was a direct question somebody asked me on Facebook, and it seemed like a popular one. So I'm just going to start by telling you one of the biggest lies ever that upline leaders, mentors, other network marketers say to people who are freshly coming out and who are excited to the business and basically they give you the illusion that you will practically make thousands tomorrow <laughs> they they talk you up to believe that you're one of these guys and it's it's kind of crazy you feel on top of the world you're like yes I'm amped I can do this I am Robert Kiyosaki I'm here to tell you there's no such thing as coming into the business one day, making millions tomorrow, and retiring. Get real. A lot of marketers tell potential investors and business partners these things to get them really revved up and they're good and built up on this high of making it big tomorrow for a month. But then the second month comes, then the third month comes, and the fourth month comes, and people start not being any, able to afford your product anymore, or you stop getting leads. Then what? I'm here to tell you that a start, starting a business, whether it's online, on your corner, on in a corporate office, it's a commitment. If you're scared of this word, just pause my webinar and go to something else. Commitment, commitment, commitment is key. That's why it's bolded and underlined and put in red. Commitment is key. You're not going to grow millions overnight. That's just crazy. And people that seem like they just waltz in and made millions overnight, trust me, they have a backstory that they tell no one. And it usually involves them failing a million times before they actually succeeded. It takes time, like I said. And I, I, I like to pose these questions to people who ask me this because it's, it's quite funny. And Robert Kiyosaki, Deegan Smith, who is one of the biggest network online MLM marketers, and Donald Trump had to fail a considerable amount of times in order to build millions and billions. Why do you think you would just waltz in not knowing anything about marketing, the industry, and just own all the money markets. It's unheard of. It's crazy. If people could do that, we would have no problems. Um, just think about that. The last and final big question was, how much money do I need to start off? Depending on your product and the tools you'd need to market and whether or not you want office space, start a 
costs can range anywhere from a thousand to ten thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. A lot of people don't have that money, especially people that I target, I market, and probably many of you watching this. However, marketing online is so cheap that online businesses often are better choices for newcomers. I started off online. While others spend thousands of dollars just advertising the wrong way, emphasizing on wrong, on the internet, starting an online business the smart way on the internet can cost as low as $500. $500 or less, actually. Yes, I said $500 or less. <laughs> um, if you wanted to find out more information about this, uh, just view the comment right below this video after the webinar and it'll take you to a page. No, it's not spam. I'll ask you to, you know, fill out your contact information in your email and then you'll get a free video series on how you can start your online business and market online for $500 or less. This is real stuff. So just to recap everything I said in this, you know, brief webinar, market and sell a product you know people need to make their lives easier. Again, people are lazy. If you can solve a problem that'll take them five minutes to do as opposed to an hour it would take them to do it, they're going to buy it. They're going to buy it fast. It's not necessarily what you sell, but how you sell it. Again, you can sell rings on a stick as long as you market it the right way and appeal to the right target market, you're going to sell like hotcakes. Successful marketing is the key to success. Again, the key word for this webinar is marketing. I can't say that enough. It's in bold. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Online is the best and sometimes the cheapest way to market and get people to buy your product, especially if you're new. This is also bolded and underlined. Understand your prospect. If you have your target market, you won half the battle. If you don't even know who your target market is and you market to everyone, you've officially lost and you should do it all over again. Here's a, another important one. Building a business is not a get-rich-quick scheme, so stop looking for one. There's different MLM markets that, yes, you can get startup income as quick as a week, and that's great, but it takes time to build residual income, to get people on your team, to know what they're doing, to recruit more people so that you can get commission. It takes time. So, yes, the startup money may be great and fast at first, but what happens when it stops coming? You don't look for another scheme. You find a way to build residual income and market more effectively. Be consistent. You'll have consistent people looking at your product if you're consistent. If you're consistently posting ads, which there are free ads that you can post, by the way. If you're consistently blogging, if you're consistently uh, putting statuses on Facebook that appeal to your target market, people will be looking into your product. Another important one, it takes money to start a business, but you do not have to go broke doing it. Again, right after this webinar is over, read the comments I've put below. Comment if you have any questions, but most importantly, click on the link on how you can start a business for $500 or less. This is free stuff, people. Free stuff. Finally, questions, comments, show me love. That's me. Woohoo! Okay. So I need everyone to basically comment below. I want to thank everyone for viewing this webinar. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions about a next blog topic, comment below. Comment, comment, comment. I don't tell you to comment as a courtesy. I really want to know what you're thinking. So thanks again, everyone. This is Tachi from Tachi's Tidbits, and I'm signing off. It's how to build your business. Bye.